runs another Holocaust in Forbes Field, a Pirates exhibition of skill this afternoon, reducing their standing to seventh place in the National League. Uh, by the way, I'll not be with you for the balance of the season. It seems in the course of my sportscast, I have somehow offended the great Guffy McGovern, alleged manager of the Pirates. Steps have been taken, and briefly, your announcer has been canned. I'll still have my regular Tuesday night broadcast and Wednesday television. And I shall continue to call the plays as I see them. This is Fred Bale saying thank you, Guffy McGovern. Well, well, Guffy McGovern. How are things in seventh place? Fine, fine. What do you do with your afternoons now, Junior? Thanks to you, I just signed a deal to broadcast for the Giants, who, as you may have heard, are leading the league. Meanwhile, I'm just lying around thinking of things to say about you. Why don't you catch me tonight? I'm on the air in an hour. I can't wait. I got a mission in life now, Guffy. I'm going to run you out of this town. Maybe right out of organized baseball. You wouldn't do that. Oh, yes, I would. I'm a stinker. Why don't we talk this over? Uh, let's slip in here a minute. Huh? I got an exclusive for you. Before I say good night, I would like to reiterate, my opinions are those of an unbiased observer who has the best interest of baseball at heart. There is nothing personal in my feud with Guffey McGovern. Incidentally, don't look for me on television tomorrow. Is that all right? <laughs> well, 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 this is a cozy little scene. Birthday party? Yeah, yeah, keep moving, huh? Well, I don't like to intrude, but may I have your autograph, Mr. McGovern, on a check? I got the tab today from my dentist. Repairing bridge work, $180. Just send me the bill, first of the month. Mm. I think you like this very much. I like your oh, natural. Will you stop? Will you stop? Well, I thought you'd like to see what you're paying for. I beg your pardon. Look, blow, huh? Please. Uh, let me explain. You see, a few weeks ago, uh, Mr. McGovern, in his usual charming, inimitable style, put the slug on me. Didn't you, Guffy? Would you step outside? I would moment. be delighted. McGovern? Oh, sure, sure. Don't worry. Yeah, what? Look, I'm, I'm having a little birthday. Don't louse it up, huh? No. Now you had a couple of drinks. You feel good. I feel fine. Great shape. Sure, be a nice guy. Go on home. Why should I be a nice guy for you? Give me one reason. Nobody's bothering you tonight. Nobody will. And if any certain party tries to bother me, I'll hook them in the mouth. Oh, now, wait a minute. Believe me, gentle listener, there is more to this than meets the eye. Mr. McGovern's antics, on the field and off, are no longer a source of amusement, but a basis for serious inquiry. His latest peccadillo, an admission to the press that he converses with angels... Oh, for heaven's sake, you were hitting the, the hedge you could say Pittsburgh anything. ...pirates is unworthy of the high position he now commands. Proof beyond doubt that Mr. McGovern is, to put it charitably, emotionally unstable and guilty of conduct detrimental to organized baseball. Mr. McGovern's supporters claim his peculiar statement was made after being hit in the head with a line drive. Therefore, he is not responsible. He admits it. I would like to ask Mr. McGovern a question. Was he responsible seven weeks ago in Boston? How about it, McGovern? Seven weeks ago, were you or were you not of sound mind and limb? Beside me in the studio tonight is a man who can answer these questions. Would you tell us your name, please? Patrick J. Finley. What is your occupation, Mr. Finley? I'm a groundkeeper at Braves Field up in Boston. Will you please tell us what you saw in Braves Field about uh, seven weeks ago? Well, I see Mr. McGovern. What 
time. I don't know, after the game. Where was he? Sitting on second base. And what was he doing? He was talking. Talking to whom? I don't know. There wasn't anybody there. And uh, when he was sitting on second base, talking to somebody who wasn't there, where was he looking? Up. What did he say? I don't know exactly. I couldn't hear everything. I was in the dugout. But one thing he said was, I have a right to know the name of my own angel. He said that? My own angel? Yes, sir. Then he said again, don't go away mad. Thank you, Mr. Finley. I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, and Mr. Commissioner, is this the act of a normal, reasonable man to hang around second base at night and talk to angels? Much as I hesitate to say this, I think that Mr. McGovern should take a long, long, perhaps permanent rest. We've been practicing psychiatry, Dr. Blaine. Eighteen years. You've just heard Mr. McGovern's account of how a group of angels helped his ball team. As a psychiatrist, how did his story impress you? Belief in celestial beings is a carryover from mankind's ignorance and fear of his environment. Originally, man worshipped the sun, the moon, stones, trees. But with the rise of religion as we know it today, man felt the need of a closer alliance with the supreme being. And so he invented the angel. Invented? Precisely. Just as a hurt child will run to its parent, so will a man turn for comfort to a belief in angels. And when this belief takes the form of uh, actual conversation with angels, what is your professional opinion? Well, I'd prefer not to say, but I'd be happy to see you, Mr. McGovern, in my office. <laughs> well, I think that'll be all, Doctor, and thank you. Mr. Commissioner. Yes? I'd like to introduce three witnesses for the defense. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, I do not know any of these gentlemen. My name is Guffey McGovern. Dr. Eustace Danforth, Trinity Church. How do you do? Rabbi Alan Hahn, Temple Israel. How do you do? Father O'Hulahan, Church of Our Lady, Queen of the Angels. Uh, gentlemen, just make yourselves comfortable. Mr. Commissioner. Uh, I suppose you gentlemen know the general idea in back of this inquiry. Well, what do you think? Do you suppose there might be angels? Right to left. Lead the way, Dr. Danforth. To deny the existence of angels is to deny the word of the Holy Bible, which is specific on the subject. From the ancient Hebrew text, we have the words Bene Elohim, the sons of God, Kadoshim, the holy ones, and Malach, Mal, how do you pronounce that? Malachim. Thank you, Rabbi. The Malachim, the messengers. All of these may be translated angels. You'll check me on that, Rabbi Han. It was an angel who guided the children of Israel to the promised land. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. In Psalms, again, we find an angel, the protector of men, the angel of the Lord, encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. Father Overhand? Seeing as how there are whole coveys of angels flitting through the pages of the Holy Scriptures, both Old and New Testaments, I don't see how I can get out of saying I believe in them. I imagine the Commissioner does too. Oh, please, just leave me out of this. Uh, Mr. Commissioner. Yes. Father, uh, would you also believe that uh, they play baseball? What's that? Well, Mr. McGovern has testified that uh, Angels helped his team. Well, now, uh, considering all the great wonders that angels have performed, I'd be much surprised if they couldn't play baseball, providing, of course, they had a mind to. Ah, but would they? With all respect to your cloth, gentlemen, is it likely that one of your angels or a group of angels would lend support to a man like Guffy McGovern? Is it possible that angels would aid and comfort such a man?
If a man have an hundred sheep and one of them should go astray, doth he not leave the ninety-nine in the mountains and go and seek that which is gone astray? Matthew chapter 18, verse 12. Besides, the Lord uh, isn't as small-minded as some of us mortals. And now, Mr. Commissioner, I had a short talk with Rabbi Hahn in the elevator, and we both discovered we're seeing a ball game at 1.30, so if you don't mind. Oh, of course not. Uh, you'd better hurry. Thank you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. If Dr. Blaine would care to see me in my office, I'd be very happy indeed. <laughs> hey, fellas. Where are you sitting? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Anything further that you'd like to add, Mr. McGovern? Nothing. Well, gentlemen, I have listened to both sides of this argument, and frankly, I am baffled. I'm sure we'd all like to believe in angels. I know I would. But if only had just one tiny bit of concrete evidence. However... Commissioner? Yes? This is Bridget White. She wants to testify for Mr. McGovern. Mr. Commissioner, a minute ago you were all set to make a decision. Let's get on with it. I don't want anyone hammering away at this kid. Sister, will you please get her out of here? If the Commissioner wants to hear about angels, he ought to ask someone who's seen them. Mr. McGovern, what are you afraid of? All right, you just sit right down. Uh, what is your name, little girl? Bridget White, eight years old. Oh, yes. And where do you live, Bridget? St. Gabriel's Home for Often Girls. You believe in angels, don't you? Doesn't everyone? No, no, they don't. But I saw them, twice. And where did you think you saw these angels? In the ballpark. They were helping the pirates. You're quite sure about that? You wouldn't... Uh, just make up a story, would you? Oh, no. It's bad to lie about anything. But if you lied about angels, I guess that'd be real trouble. Mr. Commissioner, may I question the witness? Certainly, certainly, certainly. Now, Bridget, when you, uh, when you saw your, uh, angels, what were they doing? Well, there was one standing behind Mr. McGovern. But, uh, you didn't see him talk to Mr. McGovern. No, but I know he must have. Why? Because Mr. McGovern said so. You think that one of your angels, one of these heavenly messengers, would talk to a man like Mr. McGovern? Of course. Any angel would be proud to talk to a nice man like Mr. McGovern. <laughs> quiet, quiet, please. Is that all, sir? Mr. Commissioner, I hope we're not going to accept this as testimony. The child is obviously prejudiced. What are you talking about? I will decide what is evidence here. Isn't it true that you tried to adopt this child? Haven't you recently made a declaration of this intention to the orphan's court? Suppose I did. What about it? Why, Mr. McGovern? There's nothing definite yet. I don't even know if the court will let me have her. You don't just walk in and adopt a child. There's problems. Oh, there's no problem here, Guppy. Nevertheless, you wanted to adopt her. Oh, that's nice. It's touching. The little girl who saw the angels now stands up to testify for Mr. McGovern. But isn't she actually testifying for Papa... Gentlemen, I think, in view of the facts, all things considered. This case is dismissed. Well, there you have it. Uh, final score, Pittsburgh 2, New York 1. And, of course, a pennant for the Pirates. Well, I hope Mr. McGovern's angels are pleased with the way things turned out. Are you happy up there, little angels? Why don't you shut up? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>